222, Hollywood versus reality. Punch it. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 74 Gear, is all about aviation. Since I started doing this ATC versus pilot series, a lot of you suggest that I do the air traffic control movie 222. I put a link to the movie down in the description below if you want to check out the full movie. And if you have a movie that you want to see on this Hollywood versus reality series, the two easiest places to submit an idea is on my Instagram, 74gear, or on the free forum, 74gear.com. All right, let's get into it. A7349, wind 360 at 15, line up runway 4 left, clear for takeoff, good day to you sir. 7349, clear for takeoff, good day right back at you sir. A lot of metal in the air today people, let's focus alright? A3399, taxi via Delta Alpha and hold short of Juliet. CA135, contact tower 23.9. Contacting tower 239. She's all yours buddy. CA-135, awaiting final runway clearance. CA-135, line up runway 22 right. Clear for takeoff. Contact departures 3501 airborne. CA-135, clear for takeoff. Okay, here's the first lot of 10 downstairs that are gonna be jammed up for the next half hour. I know you love a bit of chaos. Okay, back to EA-39, square the base, reduce the minimum speed now. EA-39, squaring the base, reducing the minimum speed. Pulling her right back. That made me look bad. You send that little bitch around and you owe 10 bucks to the drinking fund. Awaiting final landing instructions. Five takes off. EA thirty nine lands. Damn. Atta boy. There. Wow. There is a lot to cover here. First thing he says to American is uh, the winds. Then he says line up and then clear for takeoff. All in the same thing. L listen to what he says here. A7349, wind 360 at 15, line up runway 4 left, clear for takeoff. Just about everything that he said here is Hollywood. Every airline has a two digit code. So for example, American Airlines, their two digit code is AA. So he calls them AA. That's not how it worked. They'd go by their call sign, American. Then he says the wind, 360 at 15. Now it is true that when you get clear for takeoff, in some cases the controllers will give you the winds, but they will not give you the winds like the way he's saying here, 360 at 15. Usually they say 360 at 15 knots or 360 maybe at 15 knots. They'll say something like that, but not clumping it all together. They clear up and they say each individual number by itself, generally speaking, so that way there's no confusion by clumping them together. 360 could maybe sound like 316, even though air traffic control and pilots only deal in tenths of degrees. But the reason they split it up like that is just so there's no confusion. Which then brings me to the final thing which he said was, line up runway 4 left cleared for takeoff. Well, obviously the pilots are going to line up on that runway before they are cleared for takeoff. You'll be given two different things when you get on the runway. You're either going to be told line up and wait, which means you get your aircraft into the middle, lined up on the runway getting ready for takeoff, which is something that they'll do if they have some landing traffic or something else is going on and there's somebody that's turning in front of your path, but they want to get you in, in a position ready to go. So they'll say line up and wait. Or the other thing they'll do is before you even get onto the runway, they'll say, four left, cleared for takeoff. So what it would actually sound like in real life would be American 123, runway four left, cleared for takeoff. Or American 123, wind 360 at 15 knots, runway four left, cleared for takeoff. Those are the two ways that you would hear that as a pilot and air traffic control would be saying it to you. Now that I explained that, listen to the first five seconds again. A7349, wind 360 at 15, line up runway 4 left, clear for takeoff. 
In this first clip, they obviously don't use the call signs at all as they go through this first clip. So I'm not gonna beat up every single individual airline that they don't use. Just realize that they're always going to call you by your call sign unless they don't know what your call sign is. But in a place like JFK, which is a base for American, they know that that would be American. Next, you see this plane pulling onto the runway and asking for a final clearance. GA 135, awaiting final runway clearance. The only two things that you're going to get when you get onto the runway is line up and wait or you're cleared for takeoff. So if you're just pulling onto the runway, you're not, it means you just got told to line up and wait because you obviously weren't cleared for takeoff. So you'd be pulling onto the runway and you wouldn't be pulling onto the runway saying, hey, I'm ready to go. That's not how it would work. If you were sitting on there for a while and you thought maybe they forgot about you, you might say something like Boeing 123 on runway four left, ready for takeoff or something along those lines just to let them know, hey, you're here in case that you got forgotten about, which sometimes happens. But you definitely wouldn't be saying that as you were pulling onto the runway because you would have just been given the instructions to line up and wait. Now this next part has some correct parts and a lot of Hollywood parts. CA 135, line up runway 22 right. Clear for takeoff. Contact departures 3501 airport. CA 135, clear for takeoff. Every runway has a number to it. You've heard them say runway 22 left or runway 4 left or runway whatever. And those numbers are based on a compass heading. I talked about it in the Catch Me If You Can video because they talked about, I don't know, runway 39 or some number that doesn't exist. Girl, look, that's LaGuardia right there. Runway 44. It's all based on runway 36, meaning directly north, and then obviously going from there all the way around. So if you were to have runway 22, your plane would be go taking off going southwest. If you're on runway four, you'd be taking off going northeast. And that's how it's laid out. Every airport is the same everywhere in the world. But to avoid confusion, we don't say things like 22 left. You say runway 22 left. Now, has it happened that people made mistakes and said 22 left? Yes, I've done it myself. I'm not proud of it, but sometimes it happens. But it's definitely not the norm like you're seeing here. An air traffic controller especially wouldn't be continually saying something like that because people would get annoyed with them. Also, you will typically get your departure frequency, which is the frequency of the people you speak to after you get up in the air. You're typically given that when you get your clearance. Your clearance is when air traffic control verifies that the flight plan that you have planned for, that they agree that that's the route you're gonna fly. Typically, they will give you that departure frequency right there because they know once you get up in the air, you're gonna be pretty busy. In some airports and some places in the world, they will give it to you while you're headed out there, headed out to the runway, or in some cases when you're up in the air. And for all of my air traffic control people that are listening outside of the US, it's much, much easier to give it to us on the ground because a lot of times you know what it's going to be. So if you give it to us on the ground, we can plug everything in there. And that way when they say over to departure, we just have to hit a button and we're not busy because we're gonna be busy with flaps and different call outs and different things in that stage of flight. So it's easier to have it loaded up and ready to go. However, it does happen. So we could go ahead and say that is real. Watch this again. CA 135, line up runway 22 right. Clear for takeoff. Contact departures 3501 airborne. Something that is not real and makes no sense, however, is the fact that they're taking off and landing on the same runway going opposite directions. A7349, wind 360 at 15, line up runway 4 left, clear for takeoff. CA135, line up runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. You heard them say, I think clear for takeoff 4 left, and then shortly thereafter, you're cleared for takeoff 22 right. That is a reciprocal runway. So you have one taking off one direction and one taking off the other direction. That's not how it works. There are some places in the world where they will land a direction and take off a direction and use the opposite like that on the same runway because of mountains or airflow traffic or things like that. But in a place like JFK, that's not how it's gonna work. Everyone's gonna be taking off the same direction. Everyone's gonna be landing the same direction. You might have intersecting runways, but you're not gonna have guys taking off four left and then another guy taking off two, two right. That is 100% Hollywood. Then you have this pilot saying they're awaiting final landing instructions. Awaiting final landing instructions. First, nobody would ever say that. And second, he doesn't even say his call sign. So he's just assuming that air traffic control is gonna know who he is. That's not how it works. That might happen with a new pilot. In fact, I heard about it on a future air traffic control versus pilots video. There will probably be something about that where there's a new pilot and he forgot to repeat his call sign and he was from another place. So he was a little bit lost, a little bit flustered, but an airline pilot knows that you're gonna need to say your call sign when you have a request. 
And finally, the last very Hollywood thing here is you don't have controllers taking off and landing planes as close as you see here. In a place like LaGuardia, that's really busy and has very limited space, for example, we used to do this. You'd see a plane landing one direction and you would take off the other directions. In a place like JFK, where they have a lot more space, you're typically not going to have guys taking off and landing in an intersecting way like this. Okay, so off to a rough start here on 222, but let's see what's next. Hey, people, come on, let's clear these boards. What's going on? Y-A-950, hold short, 22 right, you number two to go. Y-A-950, hold short, 22 right. A-A-41, wait for the final takeoff and stretch and start. Hey, 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 41, wind 0, 10 at 10, clear for takeoff, runway 4 left. A-A-41, clear for takeoff, runway 4 left. Sir, you need to fasten your seatbelt. Thank you. This is your captain speaking. Due to cloud cover over the tri-state area, we may experience slight turbulence leading into our descent. QA-56, departure 2339. Good day to you, sir. QA-85, please. Good day right back to you, mate. That Yankee's your bird, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to tell him something like, uh... J-1165, 787 rolling, caution wake turbulence, wind 312, clear to land, runway 31 left. J-1165, 781, prepare for final landing clearance. SA-841, preparing for final landing clearance. Prepare for landing. Captain crew, prepare for landing. So all the poor phraseology stuff that I said in the first part of the video, for this because obviously they didn't get better from the beginning to this clip. I thought it was funny that they said that they were going to experience turbulence because of cloud coverage, which does happen, but then they showed the passenger looking out the window and this is her view. Obviously, she can see the ground. And then I also found it interesting because just moments ago they had planes taking off and it was clear skies. It's true, when you go through a lot of clouds, in a lot of cases where there's buildup, like a rainstorm, things like that, it's going to be bumpy. But in this, you're not going to have turbulence on the descent when the cloud level are, is that high. Next, you see them giving Qantas the departure frequency on the takeoff roll. Now, I said that sometimes they'll give it to you when you get into the air. Sometimes they'll give it to you on the way to the runway. Most of the times they'll give it to you while you're sitting on the ground, parked at the gate, which is the best time. Please send that to us at that time, air traffic control. But you're never, ever going to get it on the takeoff roll. That is super Hollywood. Look at this. QA-56, departure 2339, good day to you, sir. QA-85, please, good day right back to you, mate. You will also never get a call from air traffic control saying something like, prepare for landing clearance. That's basically saying like, hey, I'm going to call you in just a minute and give you some extra information. That, why, why would you waste up the airway space with something like that? You will get told something like, continue, meaning you're not cleared to land, but we want you to keep coming. But you won't get something like, hey, I'm going to call you back in a few minutes with something else about something about landing. SA-841, prepare for final landing clearance. SA-841, preparing for final landing clearance. The only time that you'll get told something like this, prepare for something in the future, is if you're planning to hold. They might say, plan for holding instructions, something like that, to let you know you're not going to be landing. But in this scenario, you're not going to get something like, prepare for landing instructions later. That's never going to be a radio call. So nobody says that except for Hollywood. And something that is airplane related and very, very Hollywood is that even I know, and I've never flown an Airbus before, but even I know when you're getting ready to land, you don't take the thrust levers and put them into the toga detent. Prepare for landing. You would only do that if you were planning to do a go around. And the other thing you hear is that they have the captain sitting in the right seat and the first officer sitting in the left seat. I mean, it was a 50-50 try, but you got it wrong. The YouTuber Captain Joe had actually called me a couple weeks ago and he said, man, you keep doing these Hollywood movies. I bet you Hollywood's gonna call you on set. And, and I'm pretty sure if I keep doing things like this one and, and where I roasted the Wonder Woman movie, I, I'm gonna be like blacklisted from even going back to LA. But let's see what's next. GA950, line of Roman 22 right, clear for takeoff. GA950, lining up 22 right, clear for takeoff. You didn't hold him? 
Yankee, uh, dude, what are we doing? Kennedy Tower, are we still clear to land? To get Yankee to abort. Get him the hell out of here. Hey, yes, Tell him to pull up. SA-841, clear to land. Clear to land. GA-950, punch it. Okay, Hollywood, so if you wanted to make turbulence in this particular situation here, where they're getting short and getting ready to land and they hit turbulence and there is no clouds, which you talked about earlier in this video, it would have been a lot easier to have them landing behind another big jet. They have something called wake turbulence. So in this scenario, you could have had them landing behind another big jet, and I've experienced this before in smaller aircraft, and you fly into what's known as their wake. It's where the wind that's generated from the wings and it creates a really turbulent airspace and a very short amount of turbulence like you saw here. So if you wanted to create that impact, that would have been the easier way and more realistic way to do that. Now a plane asking to confirm clearance to land, that's a real thing. Yankee, uh, dude, what are you doing? Kennedy Tower, are we still clear to land? But the transmission would be something more like, JFK Tower confirmed Boeing 123 is cleared to land. That's what it would sound like in real life. Not the random transmission without a call sign to let air traffic control know who you even are and who's asking if they're cleared to land. They need to know that. It appears that this guy here is a supervisor. And I'm saying this as a pilot, I've never worked as an air traffic controller before, but in my experience, a lot of times supervisors have the ability to stomp on or step on other controllers which means if a controller is messing something up, the supervisors are overlooking all the different traffic that's coming in and they can listen and see everything that's going on. And if there's a controller that's doing something that's unsafe, this supervisor is able to step on that controller, basically prevent them from transmitting and are able to transmit instructions to the pilots, to us, to do something if it's not safe. What doesn't happen is the three or four people up there arguing about what to do and then they let the guy who's jacking it all up keep doing what he's doing. Super Hollywood. To get Yankee to abort. Get him the hell out of here. Next, you have to realize that pilots have the ability to override air traffic control in something that they feel is unsafe. So you're never going to have a pilot looking out the window with this face, which is better than the other face that they use when they're trying to take off. But you're never going to have them looking out the window with that face thinking, oh my gosh, I hope this works out okay. If they feel it's not safe, they say, Hey, Boeing 123, we're going around, and then it's air traffic control's job at that point to sequence you back in to come back in and land. Okay, and I hope all of you know this thing with punch it is not real. SA 841, clear to land. Clear to land. GA 950, punch it. Again, this is an Airbus, but in most airlines, you have the planes taking off in a not max power setting. And the reason they do that is they want to save the engines from working at their max capacity. It allows the engines to last longer. It saves them kind of like driving your car. If you were going to drive your car everywhere, you were redlining and going as fast as you could, that engine would die sooner. It's the same thing with a plane. But in theory, if you were going down the runway and there was something wrong and you needed to add power, you could do what they did here, but you would never have air traffic control do that. It just not how it worked, what 100% Hollywood. Even if all of the stuff that's happened in this was real, which almost none of it is, even if it was, the pitch angle that they have of this landing aircraft is so steep that if it were to continue to land at this pitch angle, it would eventually have a tail strike. That means the tail of the aircraft hits before the main landing gear hits. And you never ever want to do that. It's unsafe and it's happened before, but you definitely would never pitch your aircraft up this high in the air for this exact reason. So even the graphics people mess up on this one, and I get it, I look at planes landing all the time. So I know what the normal pitch angle would look like. If you're not a pilot and you don't watch airliners land all the time, you may not know what it normally looks like. Now, if you wanna see someone that's actually scared while they're flying, check out this video I made with this flight attendant who is scared of heights, and I took her in a very small plane with flight attendant Stella, it's right here, check that out. And if you wanna see air traffic control and pilots actually get into arguments in real life, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video up here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.